Hello everyone, welcome to our lesson today. This is lesson two on structural dynamics. The topic is on single degree of freedom system. Last time we started on uh, structural dynamics introduction and you can watch that video on the link here above. This will give you a hint of what, uh, just a preamble of what you're going to learn in this uh, course. This is a course still is covered in eight lessons. So this is a second one. And today we are going to look at the uh, free vibration of a damped single degree of freedom system. Later on, we are going to look at damped cases, uh, forced vibration, both undamped and damped. Now, this free online learning is brought to you by Dr. Gadeba Education Center in conjunction with Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. My name is Dr. Gadeba, and these are my contact address. In case you have any query, don't hesitate to write to me or leave your comment in the comment section there. Again, if you have not done so, don't forget to subscribe. Click the subscribe button, click the notification button so that you don't miss of any of these uh, lectures. And watch our other videos on the same series. I hope you enjoy the learning. Welcome. Here in this figure now, I'm showing single degree of freedom system. For example, let's consider we have a rigid frame. And then we are talking about vibration. So a lateral load is applied here. It could be a weight loading. So it's moving to and flow in this direction. This is the, the, the real scenario. So we said that we can have a dynamic representation as shown here where the mass and remember we, there are some assumptions that we made so one of the assumptions you can remember is that we assume that these columns are massless uh, massless they don't have mass so zero mass what the columns do is that they are, they are just uh, they are flexible but with no mass so, so we disregard their mass then uh, this frame or platform this beam is rigid rigid meaning it cannot bed it cannot deform so the deformation will be of this manner. The quorum can bend, they are flexible, but the beam is not. So the beam remains rigid. So horizontal, it doesn't bend. Remember, if it was uh, flexible, the beam part, then there would be, we could expect such kind of uh, deformation. Maybe, something like that. Okay? So the columns would uh, bend or deform, the deformation now here is deflection and as well as the beam but now we are saying or the assumption in dynamic analysis is that the uh, the beam part is rigid the reason being that we are concerned with lateral motion so basically we are we don't we don't want to consider the issue of the self weight of this of course there is a self weight of the beam we don't want that to consider the uh the effect of the uh axial or the vertical loads so that's why we, we make that assumption. Column, because they are flexible, they provide the restoring force. So if you apply a load here, if you apply a load, that load as shown uh, in the positive, let's say this is uh, the positive direction. This is the X, positive X. So the, the, the work of the column is trying to restore. They try to resist the, that motion. They try to restore the system back to the original position. So the representation or the, in the dynamic... Uh, system our representation we represent the quorum stiffness by kind of a string is the restoring force then because of the mass of the beam but when you apply a load lateral here the motion acceleration cost plus the mass the inertia aspect so m is uh, f is equals to ma so the inertia part is represented by the mass here this f is the externally applied force and now we talked about the damping. Damping is the other factors that try to stop this motion. So apart from now the spring, uh, the the columns, the resistance, the spring effect of the column, then within the system, maybe at the joint here, they are going to stop the motion. The, the system will not continue uh, vibrating indefinitely. So there will be a damping. We can have external damping. For example, is it because the airflow? which we'd say we talk of fluid flow, all the internal characteristic, like because of the material. Uh, now we talk of like um, the friction between different layers of the material of this, maybe like the, the, the beam or the, 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 the whole structure is itself. So external and internal damping. So that's why we represent it with this thing or this, we call it a dashboard. And this dashboard now represents the, the damping aspect so you see there are two things that are trying to stop the motion or 
two forces that are trying to resist the externally applied force. There is the damping and the flexibility or the rigidity of the quorum. So from the, of course, from the Newton second law of motion, I've talked about mass is equal to m a, which is a second derivative of displacement. Then the string stiffness, of course, from Hooke's law, f is equal to k times the elongation or the displacement k u. For a spring to follow this hook law, we are talking about an ideal, a purely elastic and massless linear spring. This is very important because we have different kinds of springs. You can have spring type A, hard spring. A hard spring is that when you apply, it, it behaves uh, in a linear manner, linear elastic manner, up to a certain point. But past that point, some spring require more force to occur, additional erogation or deformation. This one we call them uh, hard spring. Soft springs, on the other hand, they are opposite of a hard spring, whereby past elastically or past a certain range, eh, then just a small force, we are able to obtain significant erogation. We call this a softening stage. Like, for example, if you pull a wire up to a position whereby when it starts next, you find that it can erogate too much with, without application of significant load, like the one you are applying initially. What do I mean? You, at this point, the force is a direct proportion to erogation. But past this point, you may find that, and this happens, for example, let's say you are pulling a piece of bar metal, then it starts necking. So at the necking stage, you do not require the same uh, force that you are using initially at this stage. That is, a very small force produces a very large deformation which I, I mentioned that that is a softening stage. And these are the kind of what we refer to as soft spring. So some spring behave like this. Uh, others behave like this. But we consider an ideal case where force will always be proportional to erogation for our consideration. Again, we are going to look at the uh, spring equivalent. You can have spring being in parallel or being in series. If we have two springs that are in series, they are combined spring constant. So if you have two spring, of course, you need to know what is the equivalent for the whole system because we are talking of a dynamic system. This is how we go about it. If they are in parallel, equivalent spring constant is equal to just summation of the two. If they are in series, then this means the reciprocal, of course, this expression that I have given here. So if we can go back now to our previous slide, what you can explain uh, here, we can uh, application of it in this state is like, the example that we are considering of our rigid frame and you said when you apply a lateral force like that these springs uh, these columns can be expressed as a spring so there is a constant spring constant for the first column one and a spring constant for column two so the equivalent here because it's like these are like springs like that this spring one and then it's like here we have another spring joined by a rigid part here which is the beam and then there is the application of the lateral force so the effective, because now, remember previously in our last lecture, we said we have our system, our ideal scenario, then we consider a dynamic system where loads are applied only at the node sometimes. So we, we just consider one frame. So we have to combine these two columns. So we have an equivalent column. So in this case, we only have lumped mass here represent the rigid beam. And then this column here, this state column here represent combination of the two columns, which will be the stiffness of K1 because we have seen they are in parallel plus the stiffness of column 2. So this is now a simplification of such kind of a portal frame. For our analysis now, you see we need to we will be using this system because now we have the mass, we have the equivalent, this is Ke, and then because uh, a combination of this uh, stiffness K1 and K2. So now the other part, because the, we are considering the forces. So we have seen the spring stiffness. We have seen the, the mass. This is the inertia effect. And then now we want to see the damping, the expression for damping. The damping value, which you see, this represents the frictional characteristic and energy dissipation of a structure. So what we are saying is that for our vibrating system, it continues moving to and fro. Because we have applied some force, there is some energy which have initiated that motion. But because of the damping, 
combined with the stiffness of this column, the motion is going to stop at one time. The kinetic energy that we had applied or, or that was uh, imputed on the system will at one point be dissipated. What, what it means is that this stoppage of the motion, the energy is eliminated, is represented by the damping, which can be because of the frictional characteristic and also the inherent characteristic of the material or the internal characteristic of the material, which brings about the stoppage of the motion. So we represent it using a damper, and an, an ideal damper, look, by the again, here we are talking about ideal case, it's considered to be massless and inelastic. So this part that we are, I call the dash, the C, whatever the damper we are going to, to use here, we consider it to be uh, massless and inelastic. So it does not deform, which is uh, an ideal case. Now, for a viscous damper, this is where now this because of the internal material characteristics. And this we say this is uh, most commonly consider, considered type of damping in dynamic analysis. So in this case, the damping value is as a result of the velocity. So the damping force F is equals to a constant C times the velocity of the motion because of the motion. So again, the velocity can be represented of uh, velocity V is equals to changing this displacement of a change in time. So we talked of three most type of damping model, viscous, friction, and structural or hysterical, hysterical damping. This is very common in earthquake engineering. And this is the most common one that we are going to use for our case here. And its expression is as given by equation three. So are you still together so far? Thank you, thank you. So now we have seen all the forces acting on a dynamic system. This is a simple, with a single degree of freedom. So we call it a simple oscillator. So now we want to formulate the equation of motion for a single degree of freedom system. So we consider again single base, single story. So they are not multiple story. And again, bay. I know you know about the base. So for a frame building, maybe you can have, this is the first story, second story. Then between one column and the other, this is one bay, another bay, another bay. So we are just considering single bay, single story we are considering that part sorry my my kid was just making some noise there <clears throat> we are talking about we had we have talked about uh, the masses of the column being negligible and the gutter being very rigid almost infinite these are assumptions then we are talking about uh now the forces the lateral forces acting on this structure or a dynamic system so this is a single b uh fr rigid frame and then you can see there is the actual structure before deformation and then the deformation mode is shown. So you see what I'm talking about is by the beam being very rigid, it's not deformed. So it remains horizontal. So I was saying if, if it was rigid, then we may expect even the deformation on the part of the, of the beam. But now in this case, it's not going to deform. So there is the applied force, let's call it FT, not FS. Then we are saying for the beam, by saying it's infinitely rigid. So you are saying the projectile rigidity, EI values, is infinite. It's very large. This is what it means by this. You just represent the deformation because of the applied force F. So this is the our frame, our actual structure. And now here we have an analytical model of the dynamic system. So what I have just done here is the same as this slide, our representation, our dynamic system representation. This is a modeling, mass, stiffness, damping and externally applied force so here in this slide now is the same thing but now you can see i have separated this body so that i can have what you call a free body diagram a free body diagram is a separated entity where you want to show all the externally applied for all the external forces that are acting on the structure so as a result of externally applied force we will have a restoring force so acting opposite f c because of the damping and f k because of the stiffness so k is the stiffness the k represent the constant of the spring c represent the damping damping coefficient of the damper so that's why you have the force f k f c now this act if you consider this free body we have the mass because of the mass there's the inertial aspect so externally applied force we have the damping force fc and we have the restoring force because of the stiffness static stiffness fk and now because of the mass m we'll have the inertial 
force f inertia now in this part i want to mention about something called the albert principle the albert principle states that a system may be set in a state of dynamic equilibrium by adding to the external force a fictitious force and is commonly known as the inertia force so what we are saying is in this structure to set this in dynamic equilibrium because we know there is a inertia force so we can apply kind of m a a fictitious inertia force acting opposite to the direction of motion we call it the, the albert inertia force so you remember we have applied force stiffness damping and the inertia force expressed in a, an equation form so we have a, the overall applied force would be equals to the stiffness plus the damping plus the inertia so this is the fundamental equation of motion for a single for any motion that we are going to consider and expressed mathematically so we have ft is equals to ku then damping c damping coefficient times the velocity and the inertia is mass times the acceleration this is the standard form of the equation of motion now if you look at this equation ordinary differential equation and the solution of this equation now will give us the response of a single degree of freedom system now we are going to consider different cases depending on the nature of excitation force if for example we are talking about the free vibration that is there is no external applied force so in this case now we are saying we are going to look at different scenario if there is free vibration ft is zero if there is harmonic excitation and the harmonic is like this an example i give here we may have a machine here i have given this example this is a factory this is a beam our gada this is a column and then we have a machine that machine is vibrating maybe because of the unevenness of the floor or how it's positioned it's causing some movement vibration up and down so you see because the machine is running in a periodic manner repetitively and uh, we can have its motion so the motion may occur in a repetitive manner periodic and this motion may be sinusoidal that's what we talked about harmonic it's sinusoidal it can be expressed as a sinusoidal function so this is the case whereby we talk of uh, forced harmonic excitation we can also have forced random excitation like for example just a random force like uh, an impact or another now our work how do we solve an ordinary differential equation of the second order so we are considering free and damp vibration in free and damp free meaning no external excitation so ft is equals to zero and damped meaning the constant c is zero so in this case if you go back this is zero this is zero we are only left with this part and this part f stiffness and f inertia our equation of motion collapses to this and again if you look at this equation now it becomes second order homogeneous linear ordinary differential equation once we solve this equation then it means we have solved a free and damped vibration motion for a single degree of freedom the trial solution is either this all of this form it can be a cos a sign and also we know a superposition of both of them are all solution so all these are solution for this homogeneous equation where a and b are constants and this constant depends with the initiation of motion and omega denotes the physical characteristic of the system usually for the sinusoidal function sine omega t will be represented by 2 pi the period of vibration if you substitute now because we have the solution the trial solution we have them here so if you substitute equation 6 into equation 5 what you need to do is that you need to differentiate this u displacement u you need to differentiate it twice once and twice once so that you replace it no you don't need to differentiate once so you need to differentiate it twice so that you can uh, replace it here with the acceleration and then this one you just replace directly you are going to get equation nine for non-trivial solution this part cannot be zero because if there is we know we know we said that uh, this is a typical solution for this homogeneous equation meaning the solution is sinusoidal so if you say this part is equals to zero then it means there is no motion it can be zero at one time but if at all time is equals to zero then there is no motion there is no sinusoidal wave so this part cannot be equals to zero that's why you say the part in the bracket have to be zero at for for this equation to be satisfied at all times of course now if we equate this part equal to zero then if you make omega the subject 
you have this expression omega squared is k over m so the positive square root of this omega is what we require to as the agura or agura natural frequency of course recall weight is equals to mass times acceleration so you can factor in the weight uh, you eliminate the mass so that you have this expression so this part is the one that we wanted to make that we're using this expression this can be represented by u capital u st which is the static displacement of the spring due to weight so to illustrate this assume a spring is hanging if we apply a downward force spring would be at this point at one time because of the erogation so this erogation so if you consider this part the erogation of the spring this part to this part or even this part to this part we are just looking at the erogation this is the part we are calling ust the static displacement of the spring because of the weight now again we have from this equation here we have been able to get the aggregate acceleration remember we are solving this ordinary differential equation so to solve this we need to get what is the value of u from equation eight here because now we have found this is also a solution we said this proposition of the two trial solution is also a solution differentiating that you are going to get the velocity as this so you you should be able to conduct that differentiation to get equation 14 and the constant of integration these ones can be determined from the initial condition that is at time t equals to zero the initial displacement u is equals to u naught at initial velocity is equals to v naught solution of the ordinary differential equation from the initial condition is what is called the initial value problem so we are solving this ode from the initial conditions given this one we call it the initial value problem and now if you substitute this the initial conditions into equation eight eight is our expression for displacement and 14 is our expression for velocity you are going to get the constant a and b as shown here so a is the initial displacement and b is equals to initial velocity divided by the angular frequency therefore equation 8 becomes so this equation 8 what is the displacement remember we are solving for u so you are to look for the value a and the value b so we just need to replace with a and b so this is now our solution so you can see this solution so equation 16 is harmonic harmonic meaning it can be expressed as a sinusoidal function so you can see it's a combination of sine and a cos at any harmonic function is periodic it have got a constant period and we know that the period of a sinusoidal wave is equals to 2 pi a sinusoidal wave if it's a sine we say sine 2 pi t it could be sine 2 pi it could be sine 2 pi of 4 if the period is reduced or something like that so what we are saying is that this component of a typical sinusoidal wave is represented by this part so omega t is equals to 2 pi therefore t is equals to 2 pi of omega which is the undamped natural period of our system and the unit are seconds now the reciprocal of equation 17 so the reciprocal of the natural period is the natural frequency and the units are cycle per second all hertz. this is the expression 18. now from, from trigonometry equation 16 can be expressed in this form in a compact form it can either be this or this if you use a negative then it's a cos where this value c is given as shown here c is the amplitude alpha or beta is the phase angle and therefore now our solution of the motion of the motion for a simple oscillator which we are talking of undamped free vibration of single degree of freedom system can be expressed graphically as shown here so we say c is the amplitude t is the period uh, v naught is the initial velocity u naught is the initial displacement and alpha over omega this is the phase angle so let's see now example so example application is very easy so we have for example here a simple case we are saying a weight of 15 newton is suspended by a spring so we have a weight of 15 newton suspended by a spring 
uh, 15 newton and then uh, the stiffness of the string is 2 newton per millimeter you are to determine the natural frequency of the free vibration of the system so of course natural frequency we have expressed it f note that there is the difference between the when we say natural frequency generally we are talking of f if you do not specifically say angular frequency then we are talking of f so f we have the expression you substitute your values the acceleration due to graphite G is given, and this gives us 5.76 hertz. Example number two, calculate the natural angular frequency for the frame shown in the next figure. Also calculate the natural period of vibration, and then you are in, given the initial condition, displacement and velocity. So you ask what is the amplitude, and displacement at T is equal to one second. So you are to take EI is equal to 30 times 10 to the power 12 newton per millimeter cubed. Newton millimeter cubed. This one, of course, because we, we said uh, the frame, for the frame, for our case now, we are considering a very rigid beam. Even though I have not said it, this EI is 4 for the quorum. For the beam, EI is quite large. So we said it's generally infinite. But remember, not all cases that this one have to be rigid. For our case now, here we are just considering to be rigid. So this is the frame we have here, quorum A, B. CD and then the GADA having a mass 3 times 10 to power 6 Newton as BC. Of course, now the restoring force is provi provided by the spring. So you see, we say this quorum can be represented by, by spring. So you have a spring there and another spring here. So you can get the equivalent spring constant because these are spring in parallel. A case for spring in series would be whereby we have a multi story building. So we have a multi story building like that. Then we have this is the first spring. We have another spring, we have another spring here. So in this case now, this would be spring in series. But this would be spring in series, while from this uh, this column to this side, it would be spring to spring in parallel. So this is now the equivalent spring constant. Now you can go ahead and calculate the angular frequency. It's given by this equation. So what you are being tested here is whether you are able to calculate the angular, uh, the, the spring, equivalent spring, constant then natural period of course you have the expression very easy period is the reciprocal of the natural frequency and now we want to calculate the amplitude at t is equals to one so we are solving the initial value problem ivp using the initial condition so remember equation 21 and 23 we gave previously 21 this one 23 and also equation actually it's equation 20 not 21 we are using this so we said equation 16, the solution can be expressed as shown by this in compact form. We are using this, U can be expressed in compact form as shown. So at T is equal to zero, the initial conditional displacement is 25 millimeter and um, uh, velocity is 25 millimeters per second. So using now equation to an amplitude can be given by that expression here. And the phase algo is as shown. At T is equal to one second, now, using this expression, then you have, you just need to replace now, because you have found the values of A and beta. You just need to replace, and you get displacement is equal to 24.2. So, you see, we are starting at initial displacement of 25 millimeters. So, what does this mean? Initially, for the displacement to occur, this structure is deformed 25 millimeter. And then it's released. So at one second, we want to see what is the displacement. So it's going back to its initial, original position. That's why you find that uh, the value that you have computed here is less than the initial. Because now we have released our structure. So something just to mention about the spring constant. The spring constant is calculated from the stiffness. This expression is very important. Remember the Hooke's law, F is equals to K times deformation. Right? So K is equals to F of R deformation or displacement what does this tell you expression of displacement for different scenarios is very important for a cantilever beam displacement is equals to l cubed over 3 e i so you can see k is the reciprocal of displacement because k is equals to f times 1 over delta so this sorry this is the displacement is usually p p is the load p l cube cubed over 3 e i so of course when you divide by the force p this disappears and here i've given a few examples this is a country uh, beam so the displacement here is 3 
is, is uh, PL cubed over 3 EI. So K is the reciprocal of that minus or uh, having eliminated the P. Now, this is a contrived beam, but now on this edge, it have got rotor support. So you see this one, this edge is pinned, this rotor support, this behaves like, like a country. So that in our analysis, you are given this K, th this rigidity, as values, and then you want to know the combined. But if you look carefully, note that this is different from our expression here, our calculation here. In, in our case here, support condition, both were fixed. In this example, again, I'm giving you here, this is fixed, this is pinned, all right? So you can see this, the first part, the column one, behaves like a spring fixed with a rotor. Do you know why we say there's a rotor here? Because this frame is rigid, Aurora, by the, the purpose of Aurora, if you want to know what is this mean, it means motion can move this direction, this direction, but axial deformation is restrained. So because of the rigidity of this beam, we are saying this beam cannot be formed and it cannot go up and down. That's why the deformation motion uh, uh, form is shown to be the same height as the initial but only deformed laterally. So these columns cannot erogate, they cannot deform actually. If we say, when we say, when we have this term, that is rigid deck, column mass is less, negligible, and the columns are axially inextensible. They cannot extend upward. So it's like there's a rora, they cannot deform upward. So that's why now this part is behaving like this. And then because of the pinned here, this part is behaving like this. And then you see both of them are in parallel. That's why we are adding the two stiffnesses, quorum, uh, quorum constants. Okay. So there are various cases. And if you go through what I've given here, I have given one exercise. So try to work out this exercise. And then another part is go through examples one to five given in our main reference text. So by looking at those examples, you are going to encounter this type of uh, work for different cases. So that is the end of today's lecture. Next time you are going to look at when there is damping, when C is not equal to zero. So our equation will change slightly. So the component C now is being reintroduced. So now I'll, I'll come any question or comment that you may be having. No question, then uh, I'll call it on for today until next week. So thank you, thank you, Michael Otambo. Thank you, Munene. El Amiju, thank you. So that's all for today. So let's meet next week. Bye all for now. Thank you.